NASA has decided that Butch and Sonny will return with Crew-9 next February, uh, and that Starliner uh, will return uncrewed. Yes, this is the exact final decision made by NASA by their agency's administrator, Bill Nelson, regarding the fate of the failed Starliner spacecraft and the two astronauts stranded on the ISS. Once again, Dragon is NASA's savior. Fortunately, the decision was made just as space enthusiasts like you and I had hoped. The two astronauts deserve to have their safety assured rather than being put in a dangerous situation up there in space. All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into today's content, we just want to let you know, first, thanks for checking out this video, and thanks for following the Bush and Sunni situation. We are very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy space news and analysis like this, please press that subscribe button, and that way you'll never miss out on any of our daily videos. Now, let's get into today's news. On August 24th, an official review was conducted to determine whether NASA considers Boeing Starliner spacecraft safe enough to return home with the crew, or if SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft would need to step in to help the situation. This is an issue that NASA has been talking about for several weeks since the problems with the Starliner have increasingly shown clear consequences. Although Boeing had previously attempted tests to identify the root cause of the issues, it appears that even with additional time, they were unable to gather more data and the situation could have gotten worse. After conducting a test to disassemble and recreate the faulty thrusters of Starliner, NASA felt genuinely concerned. According to Steve Stitch, their director of the commercial crew program, he said, I would say the White Sands testing did give us a surprise. It was a piece of Teflon that swelled up and got into the flow path and caused the oxidizer to not go into the thruster the way it needed to. That's what caused the degradation of thrust. When we saw that, I think that's when things changed a bit for us. So, when NASA presented this finding to the thruster manufacturer, Aerojet Rocketdyne, the thruster company said they'd never seen this phenomenon before. At this point, the agency's engineers began to accept that they were not confident enough in the physics to be certain that the thruster issue would not happen during Starliner's return to Earth. Ultimately, the decision was made for Boeing Starliner to return to Earth unmanned, and the two astronauts who took the spacecraft into orbit during the test flight would come back in a capsule manufactured by a competitor, SpaceX, despite previous assurances that Starliner was going to complete the mission. This means that SpaceX's Crew-9 mission will now be reconfigured to carry two astronauts instead of four. This adjustment will leave two empty seats for Williams and Wilmore on the Crew-9's return flight. The astronauts will also join the Crew-9 team, becoming part of the official ISS expedition. With this transition, Williams and Wilmore will stay an additional six months, the duration of a regular mission to the space station. The shift to Crew-9 will push the pair's return to as early as February 2025. In response to this news, SpaceX's CEO Gwynn tweeted on X, SpaceX stands ready to support NASA however we can. As for Elon, he didn't comment on the matter. Instead, he shared a story titled Re-Entry by renowned journalist Eric Berger, which discusses the development of Crew Dragon in competition with Starliner and NASA's secret meeting where SpaceX almost got excluded from the crew contract. This reflects his pride in his spacecraft and his desire to show everyone just how crucial SpaceX's presence is to the space industry these days. The latest result from NASA will be a significant blow to Boeing. Ten years ago, SpaceX was looked at with skepticism, like they were space cowboys or something. For 15 years in the space industry, Boeing was regarded by many in the industry as the aristocracy of space travel, while SpaceX was seen as the company that was going to kill astronauts due to its alleged recklessness. Now the space agency is asking SpaceX to rescue Boeing astronauts currently on the ISS. This isn't the first time SpaceX has recently helped out a competitor. In the past two years, SpaceX has launched satellites for a competitor in low-Earth orbit internet, OneWeb, after Russia's space program tightened control over the company. They've launched Europe's Galileo satellites after the Ariane 6 rocket got delayed, and they've launched the Singa spacecraft built by NASA's other space station cargo service provider Northrop Grumman multiple times. Now SpaceX is going to help Boeing, a competitor in crewed missions. So what about the fate of Starliner after it returns? In the latest meeting, NASA stated that if the uncrewed return goes well, they will face an important decision, whether to officially certify Starliner to carry humans into space, a step that would allow the spacecraft to perform regular flights to orbit, even though the fact remains that it did not complete the mission as planned. 
In a statement on Saturday, Boeing said it continues to focus first and foremost on the safety of the crew and spacecraft. We are executing the mission as determined by NASA and we are preparing the spacecraft for a safe and successful uncrewed return. Steve Stitch said Saturday that there was a little disagreement between NASA and Boeing in terms of the level of risk. It depends on how you evaluate the risk, Stitch said. We did it a little differently with our crew than Boeing did. Nelson later added that he's 100% sure that Boeing will address the issues and set up Starliner for another crewed mission at some point down the road. But in reality, don't expect another crewed flight with Starliner next year. NASA officials said on Saturday that it's still too early to decide whether the agency will require Boeing to conduct another test flight with the Starliner spacecraft or whether Starliner can get put into operation after Boeing fixes the issues with the spacecraft's propulsion system. Currently, NASA has not decided whether to classify the situation involving the Starliner crew test flight as an accident or mission failure. Making such a decision could potentially lead to a more formal independent investigation, which could delay Starliner's next flight under any circumstances. One factor that could further complicate the investigation related to propulsion is that the thrusters are located on Starliner's service module, which will burn up over the Pacific Ocean when the spacecraft returns, preventing any further inspection or data collection. Assuming the investigation does not uncover any additional issues, and NASA and Boeing decide to bring Starliner back into operation with astronauts in 2026, the remaining time for the space station as currently planned would not be enough for Starliner to complete all six missions under the contract at a rate of one mission per year. It's hard to imagine that NASA would decide to use only Starliner to send astronauts to the space station, especially considering SpaceX's success and the fact that NASA has contracted SpaceX for crewed missions through the end of this decade. Hopefully, that will not happen, because if there are no more serious problems with Starliner's launch, we've already grown too weary of all of Boeing's mistakes. For example, the first Starliner test mission, flown in 2019 without a crew, misfired in orbit and cut the flight far short of expectations. The vehicle did not ultimately dock with the space station as intended, and the outcome was revealed to be a symptom of a myriad of software problems, including a coding error that set an internal clock off by 11 hours. A second uncrewed flight test in 2022 uncovered additional software issues, and the mission teams addressed the problems with some of the vehicle's thrusters. However, the root cause of the thruster trouble plaguing the crewed mission got missed two years ago. Whether Starliner's vehicle ultimately becomes certified after its return to Earth will likely become a controversial issue, which is considered to be the most dangerous leg of the mission. The autonomous vehicle will have to use its thrusters to precisely orient itself as it plunges back into the Earth's thick atmosphere. The pressure and friction are expected to heat the vehicle's exterior to roughly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Starliner's parachutes then have to deploy without issue and slow the spacecraft before triggering airbags to expand and cushion the landing. If Starliner capsule is ultimately certified, it could join SpaceX's Crew Dragon in making routine trips to the space station to rotate staff. If the spacecraft denied certification, however, it would mark yet another blow to Boeing's already badly damaged reputation. Missing the mark could cost the company many millions of additional dollars, on top of roughly $1.5 billion that the company's already recorded in losses on the Starliner program. All of us really wanted to complete the Boeing Starliner test flight with the crew, and I think unanimously we're disappointed not to be able to do that, Bauer Sox, associate admin for NASA's Space Operation Mission Directorate said. But you don't want that disappointment to weigh unhealthily in your decision. Boeing's cost overruns have spurred recurrent rumors that Boeing may not see the Starliner program through. Nelson said Saturday, however, that he recently spoke with Boeing's new CEO, Kelly Ortberg, about Starliner's status. I told him how well Boeing worked with our team to come to this decision, Nelson said, and he expressed to me an intention that they'll continue to work on the problems once Starliner is back safely and we have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station. It is not yet clear, however, who's going to shoulder the cost of the additional testing and development that may be needed to get Starliner development to the finish line. Nelson on Saturday reiterated that its deal with Boeing is a fixed price contract, which means it's designed to be a one lump sum and then payments don't grow with delays as they do with alternative contracts, such as Cost Plus. However, Nelson added that discussions about how Boeing's willing to pay for the additional testing were not part of his conversation with the CEO. I don't have the answer to that, nor do I think I would have the answer, Nelson said. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.